Okay, just buckle your seat belt and let's go. Matthew chapter 24, if you want to turn there, if you don't, just sit and listen, write the verses down. I'll read them pretty hurriedly. I've got a whole lot to give you and a short time to give it to you in, so just stick your ears up like an old mule, pay attention, and let it go down into your heart, okay? The Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 4 and 5, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name and say, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Matthew 24, 11, And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 6 through 8 says, Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience, but be not partakers with them. For you were sometimes in darkness, but now ye light in the Lord. Walk as the children of light. So he says, let no man deceive you with vain words. 2 Thessalonians 2 and verses 3 and 4, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Father, it's a blessing to be here today. We thank you for the good word of God. I pray that you'd help us. We need your touch. We need your blessings. We need that anointing. Without it, we're a sound and brass and tinkling symbol. I pray you'd speak today. Be glorified. Be exalted. Be praised. Save every soul that's lost. Bring home the backslider. Revive the cold, the indifferent. And be honored and glorified in this service and in this message. And we'll say thank you and blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I picked up a book yesterday. And... Uh, it was a devotional book. It was for mothers. I looked at the prayer. Not one prayer was prayed in Jesus' name. You think those prayers are heard? He said to pray in Jesus' name. Okay, I want to preach to you upon this thought, deception, deception. And I want to give you the, the meaning, a uh, few of the words of deception. Okay, deceit is the act of representing as true what is known to be false. Deceit is deceiving, it's lying, it's dishonesty in action or in your actions or words. It's fraud or lie. That's what deceit is. Deceitful means apt to lie or cheat. You've seen people that are deceitful. They're apt to lie, they're apt to cheat. The word deceive means to make a person believe what is not true. It means to mislead, it means to delude, it means to beguile, it means... It implies to deliver and misrepresent the facts or words or actions. The word deception means the act of practicing deceiving, something that deceives, applied to anything that deceives, also trickery. The devil's using a lot of that, isn't he? Deceptive means deceiving or intending to deceive. To be deceived means to be duped. It means to be misled. It means to be deceived. A deceiver is a liar. He is a false witness. He's a fake. He's a snake in the grass, right? And so that's some of the words, the meaning of words in this matter of deception. Deception is one of the tools the devil's using today. It is one of the most dangerous tools that the devil uses. He used it in the Garden of Eden. In fact, deception, I think, started in heaven. You say, wait a minute, what do you mean? Well, he drew a third part of the angels with him. How did he get the angels to follow him? He had to deceive those angels, didn't he? The Bible said he's a liar and the father of a lie, right? The devil is a liar and the father of a lie. So he had to tell those angels a lie to get them to follow him. And then, of course, there he is in the Eden telling Eve a lie. And he's been deceiving ever since. And you know when deception ends, when the devil is cast in the lake of fire, the Bible said... He'll be able to deceive the nations no more. He'll be able to deceive the world no more. He's the deceiver of the whole world. He deceives the whole world. So it's a dangerous thing. Deception is one of the most dangerous tools that the devil is using, and he's using it mighty well this day and time. I want to tell you, he's deceiving the whole world, the Bible says. Deception is darkness. It's very dark, isn't it? It is sinful. It's wickedness. It is the devil's tool of sinfulness and wickedness. And, of course, it brings death. It leads to death. And so we see deception. 
Young people are being deceived today. It's ama amazing to me how young people are being deceived with all that we have, with all the radio, TV, and Internet, and all that. Yet young people are being deceived today. They go to school. They're being deceived in the public school. They're being taught evolution. And they go on to college, and they've been taught socialism. Liberal professors and social professors in the schools and colleges are deceiving our young people. It's deception. It's a dangerous tool. I'm telling you, that's the reason the Bible said, take heed, take heed, pay attention, that no man deceive you. They've been deceived by rock music. The pops and the rocks and all this. You know who they're following? They're following all these stars. And them stars look like a bunch of hoodlums most of the time. Don't look like you combed their hair for a month or two. And I guess it take a bath, but to wear clothes looks like it. Uh, what I used to wear is pretend to be... Tonto the Long Ranger or something. <laughs> but, uh, hey, it's what they're seeing. It's what they're seeing about so bad, isn't it? And, of course, you know, I, you know these uh, uh, news programs, these morning programs, they'll have some big singer, you know, on the scene. And as far as you can see, those young, most of them young people. They're there to back up their favorite star. They're being deceived. I'm telling you, they're being deceived. You don't see them in the house of God. You don't see them worshiping God. You see them in all his other concerts and all those things. And, of course, the country's also deceiving them, too. They sing about beer, drinking beer, and running around, and adultery, and all that baloney, and all that stuff. Instead of magnifying the Lord of heaven with their talent, they're magnifying the devil. And so they're being deceived. They're being deceived today by politics. You know, the, you know, communism is alive and well in the United States of America. You know that, don't you? Be careful, be careful, watch. The devil, is a, he's a deceiver. The Bible said, take heed that no man deceive you. You better pay attention. You better listen to what uh, the Bible says and pay attention. You know, somebody said they was living in Germany when Hitler was there, and they said they are seeing today in America what they saw in Germany. Isn't that sad? They're seeing today in America what they saw in Germany when Hitler took over. You know who the enemy was in Germany in Hitler's time? It was the Jew. The Jew was Hitler's enemy. He, that was the enemy. You know who the enemy is in America today? Christians. God-fearing, God-loving, God-living Christians. Oh, we're too right. We're too far to the right. No, we're just right on the center of, prayer of, God, of God's holy will. That's where we're at. Brother, people better wake up. I'm telling you, they better wake up. You know that crowd, they always... Uh, you know, try to appeal to fear and confusion and ridicule and doubt and questions and, of course, uncertainties. And they like to cast doubt on old-time religion. They like to cast doubt on the, what is right. If you're right, they're going to they're gonna try to tear you down. And uh, that's the way they do. They tear you down. They, they begin to throw all this stuff out and begin to make people doubt. Hey, brother, we need to take heed that we be not deceived. Be not deceived because I'm telling you, that devil is a master deceiver. And so, hey, you got to be careful what you hear on the news. The news will deceive you. You know the news is biased? Most news is biased. You know that, don't you? You can't believe all that baloney you hear. Huh. I'm glad the Holy Spirit lets us know. You know, I'm going to make a statement that if a person is not saved, and they don't know the Bible, they're deceived. Paul said in one place, he said, before you got saved, you was deceived. We said, we was deceived. A man living in sin, he's deceived. I want to tell you, he's deceived. He's not going to be deceived. He's deceived already. If you are not saved, and you don't know the Word of God, you're deceived. I can tell you that right now, from the Word of God. And you've got to pay attention because deception is only ever had. It's a dangerous tool the devil is using. And brother, he keeps using it. He's going to keep using it, keep using it. And one day it'll be done with. Okay, I'm going to give you some things that people have been deceived about. First of all, people have been deceived about the Bible. Oh, they say it's unreliable. They say it's the works of men. They say it's full of errors. Uh, baloney, baloney, baloney. That's all baloney. That's, that's the devil's lie. That's the devil's deception. When the devil's talking to Eve, he said, Yea, hath God said. <laughs> she said, Ye shall surely die. Oh, God don't mean that. You know, that's a trick of the devil. He's a deceiver. 
He lies, don't he? You know, the Word of God is the inspired, infallible, inerrant Word of God. It's the indispensable Word of God. The, the Word of God is true from beginning to end. In fact, the very cover of the Bible is true, Holy Bible. It's the only holy book there is. It's not the Holy Koran, it's the Holy Bible. Read this Bible every day. Every day will set you free. This will tell you what's right. This will tell you what's wrong. This will show light on your path. The Bible said the Word of God is a light to my path. It's a lamp to my feet. He showed me where I'm standing. He showed me where I'm going. Amen. It'll give you light. I'm telling you, it'll give you light. And if you don't read it, brother, you're in the dark. It's the indispensable Word of God. Without it, you're like a man out there in space. You don't know which way you're going. You don't know which way's up. You don't know which way's down. Without the Word of God, brother, you don't know where you're standing. You don't know where you're going. You're just, you're like a, somebody said, a termite and a yo-yo. That's about right, too, isn't it? I mean, you don't know where you're going up or down, around and around. You don't know where, where you're at. Without the Word of God, I'm telling you, and these folks that they deny the Bible, won't read the Word of God, they're picking up all these new versions. Am I going out, Glenn? They got all these new versions, don't even sound close to it. And I, you, you know, you pick up all these books and hardly any of them have the King James Bible in them anymore, some other version. A little bit here and a little bit. You know, you've got to copyright them versions, don't you? You can't copyright the King James Version, but all these other versions have to be copyrighted because they're the works of men. They're changing. But hey, brother, you better stick with that old King James Bible so you won't be deceived. Take heed, take heed, take heed. He said, lest any man deceive you, for many shall be deceived. Right. Many are going down that broad road and wake up in hell. They said, I thought it was this way. I thought it was that way. No, God told you what's right. You wouldn't pay no attention to it. And so without the Bible, it's the indispensable word. You need it. You have to have it, brother. If you go to heaven, you've got to have the word of God. We're begotten by the word of God. You're saved by the word of God. You're kept by the power of God through faith. And you believe the word of God. It's the foundation you stand upon. Amen. And so uh, folks are deceived about the Word of God. As I've said so many times, right there in John 3, 16, they printed a lie right. in the NIV. Sure For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. You see, they didn't read the Bible. They didn't know that was a lie. Adam was the Son of God. The angels are sons of God. We who are saved are sons of God. Jesus was the only begotten Son of God. He's the only one. There's none other like him. He's the only begotten Son of God. And so right there, you see, brother, they don't know the Bible. They change the Word of God. Number two, they're deceived about creation. These boys and girls go to college, they go to school, and they talk about evolution. We sprung from a monkey. Well, some of mine may hung by their neck, but I don't think any of them hung by their tail. <laughs> In fact, I know they didn't let them hang by their tail. <laughs> no and yours didn't either, brother. Right. You know what that's doing? That's calling God a liar. Your Bible's a lie. When they teach evolution, they're saying, God Almighty's Bible's a lie. God's a lie. He don't know what he's talking about. I'm telling you, the Bible says again and again, God created, God made everything. God made the earth and the heavens. He made the moon, the stars, the sun. He made everything, everything, and he made you too. I picked up a book yesterday, and I was looking at it. It was a book on the universe, and it said... Before anything, there was a big ball of gas as big as our, you know, solar system. And it kept spinning around till out came the sun, <laughs> out came the moon, <laughs> out came the, you know, the planets, and out came Earth. <laughs> Who would believe such bold as that? That's a devil's deception. That's a devil's lie. Deception, deception, deception. Take heed that no man deceive you. And a lot of people's been deceived, you know that. Amen. God created. You better believe that. And if you don't believe it, you can ride that other lie straight into hell. I'll just take the word of God and believe what God says. Number three, people have been deceived about salvation. You know, there's only two kinds of religion in the world. There's only, oh, there's all kinds of religions. I really don't know how many kind they are, but there's a whole lot of them. But there's only two kinds of religions in the world. Two kinds. That really makes it simple. You know that? One of them says, you're saved by works. If you work enough, if you do enough, if you live so good and do so many good works, then you'll make it to heaven. 
Think that's right? <laughs> and the other is you're saved by grace. Amen. Through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We are his workmanship, yeah. created in Christ Jesus unto good works that yeah, right. God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Yeah. I'm joining the second crowd. I believe you're saved by grace. Yeah. Plus nothing, nothing minus nothing, brother. You're saved by what he, he's already done. It's all you got to do is accept and believe it. He done died on that cross. He's done paid our sin debt, praise God. But it's, it's sad, it's sad that the world has been deceived. John 3, 16, uh, you know, or John 3, I go back to John 3, he said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. You must be born again. There's some must in the Word of God. You must, what does the word must mean? It means must, right? You must be born again. You have to be born again. If you are not born again, you will not go to heaven. That's how simple it is. You're saved by believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ, what he's already done on Calvary. You believe he's the Son of God. You trust him as your Savior and Lord. And brother, I'll tell you, he saves you. And of course, people are deceived about that. Number four, people are deceived about seeing. Anything goes. Everything's okay. It's not so bad. What's wrong with it anyway? <laughs> if God says it's sin, it's sin, right? Don't you know the difference between black and white? Surely to goodness you know the difference between black and white. Let's see. I think this is white, isn't it? And looks like my Bible here is covers with black. What about that? Anybody know the difference between that? Can you tell the difference between that? <laughs> hey, brother, there's a difference between sin and righteousness. Between wickedness and holiness, there's a difference. And if you don't know the difference, brother, you're in bad shape. I'm telling you, you need to get in this old book, amen. Get in the Word of God, begin to read what the Bible says. People are deceived about sin. Sin is black. Sin is hateful. Sin is not going to be in the presence of God. You've got to be washed from your sins. That's the only way you can go to heaven. The Bible said in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 9 through 11, Know ye not the unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abuse themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but now you're washed, but now you're sanctified, but now you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Oh, praise God. Boy, he said, don't be deceived. This is the kind of folks that's not going. And then he says, this is the kind of folks that's going. You've been washed. You've been justified. You've been sanctified by the name of the Lord Jesus. In the book of Galatians, chapter 6 and verse 7 and 8. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. You can't mock God. The Bible said the, the wicked, they mock the fool, he mocks at sin. He makes a funny sin and says, hey, 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 I do as I please. Anytime I want to, it don't make no difference. Well, up in heaven it makes a difference. Be not deceived, God is not mocked for whatsoever man soweth. That shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh, if you're living after the flesh, the Bible said, you'll reap to the flesh, corruption. But he that soars to the Spirit shall reap life everlasting. Now what about that? The Bible says again in the book of Titus chapter 3, verse number 3, For ourselves also were sometime foolish, disobedient, deceived. Now there it is, that scripture I was talking about a while ago. He said, that's the way we was before we got saved. That ever sinners deceived. <laughs> ever sinners deceived. You say, I ain't deceived. If you're living in sin, you're deceived. That's what the Bible says. <laughs> you, t you stand before God lost and tell me the devil didn't deceive you? He said, you were sometime disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice, envy, hateful, and hating one another. That's the way it was before you got saved. <laughs> Amen. Okay, number five right quick. Uh, what about folks being deceived about the Savior? There's only one Savior. You can't save yourself. You have to be saved. Nobody can save themselves. If you can pick yourself up by your bootstrings, then you can save yourself. But you can't do that, can you? You can't save yourself. You can't wash your sins away. You can't take yourself to heaven. You have to be taken to heaven. You have to be saved. You say, preach, I don't need anybody's help. Oh, yeah, you do. Everybody needs help once in a while, don't they? Amen. Well, who cooks your breakfast? You say, well, I cook my own breakfast. Well, sometimes people get where they can't cook their breakfast. 
Uh, you say, well, I can walk, but sometimes you need somebody to help you walk. You say, I put my clothes on. Sometimes people get where they can't put their clothes on. So I can drive my car. Well, sometimes people get where they can't drive a car. I can go to work. I'm strong. I can go to work. There comes a time people can't work anymore. There comes a time people need help. And brothers are lost, hell-bound, hell-deserving sinner. You need help, and you need help from Jesus. You need help from a Savior. You see, Mama can't save you. Daddy can't save you. The Pope can't save you. The church can't save you. Buddha can't save you. Allah can't save you. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Jesus alone saves. Nobody else can save but Jesus. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Thank God he saves from the guttermost to the uttermost. He'll save anybody and everybody that will come to him. If you'll come, he'll save you. If you'll repent, he'll, he'll wash you and make you clean. He'll put you in the family of God. He'll write your name in heaven and take you to the city of God in the by and by. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, there's no other name given unto heaven whereby we must be saved. It's the only name. It's Jesus. His name is the only name. The Bible said in John 8, 4, if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. If you don't believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, if you don't believe he's the Savior of the world, you will die in your sins because there is no other Savior. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 9, or if the blood of bulls and goats and the ash of a heifers and the sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying the flesh. If that's what, that's what they did under the law. Yeah. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Amen, he did it through his own blood on the cross. First John 1, 7 but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. I'm glad the blood of Jesus Christ will wash you and make you clean. The only thing will take away your sins. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. We sing an old song. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that washes away sin. You can t take the... The most powerful soap there is, it won't wash away your sins. You can go to all the confessionals you want to go to, but it won't wash away your sins. The only thing that will wash your sins away is the blood of Jesus Christ. Number six, right quick, people are, ba are deceived about baptism. A lot of folks think they are baptized, it washes their sins away. Well, if I believe that, bless God, I'd get every old sinner coming and going baptized, wouldn't you? But it don't wash your sins away. It don't bring forgiveness. Somebody said, I've got to be baptized before I die. I want to go to heaven. I can't go to heaven without being baptized. The old thief did on the cross, didn't he? You see, it is a type of the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what it signifies that you believe that Jesus died and was buried and he rose again. Thank God from the grave the third day. That's what you're saying when you submit to baptism. It says to the world, I have died out to sin. I buried that old life and I've arisen to walk a new life in Christ. And so it's a type. It is not something that washes your sins away. No siree. It is the blood that washes your sins away. Okay, uh, some folks, number seven, are uh, deceived about hell. A lot of folks say there ain't no hell. You're, you're living back in the dark ages. You believe in hell? Yes, sir, I believe in hell. Well, why do you believe in hell? Because the Bible said there's a hell. It's more than a byword. It's a real place. You say, how do you know? Well, the Bible says so. Anybody ever been to hell and come back? Well, old rich man, he wanted to get out, but he couldn't, could he? And so, hey, folk get there. They're not going to get out, brother. And so, hey, if you want to find out there's a hell, you better go to the Word of God instead of going there. When you get there, it's too late to get out. You can't get out. You can't turn around. You can't relive your life. And so you have to do it now. You have to do it now. Some, a lot of folks say, well, hell's not forever. I picked up this book, and this priest writing this book. He said, oh, this thing. Uh, you know, they've been preaching, hell's forever. He said, that hell's not forever. Well, one says the word, he's right. Because hell right now is in the sin of the earth, and it is not forever. The Bible said in Revelation 20, hell is going to deliver up the dead which are in it. Well, the soul of man is what's in hell. And it's going to be delivered up to the great white throne. And they're going to be judged and cast into the lake of fire, which is not our darkness. See, hell in the heart of the earth is not forever, but the lake of fire is. And so a lot of times we just say hell's forever. You know, use the word hell in a general sense is 
eternal punishment forever. And so hell uh, in the heart of the earth is not forever, but the hell out yonder is forever. It's the lake of fire and out of darkness. It's forever and ever and ever and ever. The Bible talks about eternal punishment. It talks about everlasting punishment. And so, hey, you better believe the word of God. Take heed that no man deceive you. Hell's a real place. It's more than the byword. You better use it right instead of using the byword. I want to say number eight right quick. Folks are deceived about heaven. Everybody's going to heaven, people think. A lot of people, everybody's going, you know. He's a good old Joe while he's in heaven now. You ever heard people, that take, that take almost the wickedest man you've ever seen, they say, oh, he's over in heaven now. <laughs> he's been a drunk, he's been a fornicator and everything else. Oh, he's over in heaven now, sitting around in the palm trees. <laughs> uh, don't you believe that, brother? Don't you believe that? Because, hey, you've got to be born again. You know, the Muslims have been taught wrong, hadn't they been deceived? And they're telling these fellows, if you kill a Jew, if you kill these Christians, these Americans, then you're going to have 72 virgins, and you're going to have uh, rivers of oil and all this stuff when you get to heaven. They're not going to make it. They're going to be mighty disappointed. They wake up in hell because of their wickedness, friend. Jesus is the only way. The Bible is the way. The Word of God is the way. Don't be deceived. Take heed that no man deceive you. Let nobody deceive you because the devil's out to deceive this is what the Bible says. You see, if you go to heaven, it's a prepared place for a prepared people. You've got to make preparation if you go to heaven. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have not, we've prophesied. Have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils. In thy name have done many wonderful works. Man. Sound like they're pretty good, don't they? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sins of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto him that unto a wise man that built his house upon the rock. A foolish man, he hears the word of God, he builds upon the sand. But a wise man, he builds upon the rock of ages. Oh, yes, a lot of people are deceived. They're deceived, they're deceived about heaven, aren't they? They sure are. Then I want to say number nine right quick. A lot of folks are deceived about the rapture of the church and the Lord's coming. A lot of people say, I don't believe in no rapture. Rapture? Huh. What do you mean rapture? <laughs> I mean a catching up and a catching away, praise God. Harpazo, that's the word he used in the Greek. That means to be caught away. It means to be caught up. And some folks say it's not even the Bible. Well, there's a whole lot of raptures in the Bible, aren't there? Enoch was raptured, wasn't he? He's, he's caught away. The Bible said, and Enoch was not because the Lord took him. Well, where did he take him to? He took him to heaven, right? What about old Elijah? Old Elijah walking along, old Elisha following him. He said, the Lord's going to take you away. And he said, stay here, Elisha. And he said, nothing doing, boy. I'm going with you. And uh, he said, uh, well, what do, you, what do you want? He says, uh, I want a double portion of the spirits on you. He said, if you see me go away, you can have it. And so Elisha wasn't about to let him get out of sight. And they went across Jordan. You know, they came to Jordan, smoked, oh, Elijah smoked that water, said, uh, you know, call God to come and, you know, open the waters. And so he walked over on dry land, gets on the other side, and all of a sudden, the chariot of the Lord and the horses of fire came down. And I don't know who come and got him. Could have been old Gable. I don't know. It might have been one of the other angels said, get on, Elijah. Yeah. He stepped on board, and he said, get up. And then the horses of fire started. And old Elisha threw his, threw his garment over his mantle back over the side of that chariot. Old Elijah, Elisha stood there with his mouth open looking toward heaven. And it went out of sight. And old Elisha picks up that mantle, walks over there to Jordan, and he smites that water with that mantle and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? <laughs> the waters roll back. The Lord God of Elijah is real. He's real. He's real. Praise God. He's real. He's real. I'm telling you, he's real. And brother, he's coming. He's coming soon. He's coming suddenly. He's coming surely. 
the world is ready for the Antichrist. When I look at all the deception, I look at these young people that have been set up for the Antichrist. I mean, they're ready to receive the Antichrist. You know that? They're not ready to receive Christ. They're not ready to go with him. They're not ready. They've been deceived. They've been deceived. They've been deceived. My soul, the world has been deceived. They're ready for the Antichrist. The Antichrist is coming, but the real Christ is coming to catch away the church and take them home to heaven. One of these days, the world's going to pick up a phone and call a Christian. Nobody's going to answer. They're going to be looking for that Christian to come in to work, and that Christian won't be punching the clock. They'll be gone. Praise the Lord. Amen. The signs are fulfilled almost completely, almost completely, almost completely. The Bible said in James chapter 5, Be patient, therefore, brethren, of the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the earth and latter rain. Be also patient, establish your heart for the coming of the Lord. Draw it nigh. You believe that? Yeah. That's what James said a long time ago. If he thought it was drawing nigh then, it's even at the door, right? right. The Bible said, knowing this, in the Second Peter chapter 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own life, saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Yeah. It's going to continue that way till he comes, too. The Bible said, Hebrews 9, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many unto them that look for him. Shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation? Are you looking for Jesus today? Are you looking for Jesus? He said unto them that look for him. Hey, if you're saved, you're looking for him, right? If you're not saved, you're not looking for Jesus to come. If he was, you'd run to these altars and get on the altar and say, Lord, save me now, save me now. I want to be saved when you come. The Bible said in the book of Mark, chapter number 13, Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh at evening, at midnight, at the crock crowing, or in the morning when the sun gets up, though Cock crowed before, what, 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning? You know, sometimes I wake up and I hear the birds, birds are chirping outside. I mean, they chirp before it gets daylight, before the sun comes up. They start chirping, don't they? And so he said, you don't know when he's coming. You don't know what day he's coming. You don't know what hour is coming. And so if you don't know, he said, let's come and suddenly he finds you sleeping. Is he going to find you sleeping? Or is he going to find you awake looking for him? What I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Watch, watch. He wants us to watch. People have been deceived, number 10, about the soul salvation. A lot of people, a lot of church people are deceived about the soul salvation. And a lot of other people have been deceived about their soul salvation. Let me just read these verses right quickly, and I'm coming to a close. The Bible says, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, Wherefore there rather... Brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. To make your calling and election sure. Do you know you're saved? Do you? He said, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. If you have made your calling and election sure, you shall never fall. That's what you call eternal salvation. <laughs> I hear these fellows say, I don't believe in eternal salvation. I don't believe in saved once, always saved. And they'll get up and preach. Oh, you're going to make it. Praise God. God will have to drag across the finish line. You're going to make it. You know what they're doing? They're preaching one thing and saying another. They're contradicting themselves. That means your doctrine is not right. I believe in eternal salvation. I believe in saved, always saved. If God saves you, he's the one that saves you. He's the one that's going to keep you. Praise God. Hey, I believe in the perseverance of the saints. The perseverance of the saints. The Holy Spirit's the one that perseveres to bring you to himself, right? He brought you to himself, and he'll keep you blessed. God, if he has to whip you, if he has to take you out of the world, the Bible said he'll remove the candlestick, and you better believe that, brother. God will beat the daylights out of you. You can't live as you please. You have to live like he wants you to live. Amen. He said if you make your call in an election, sure, you'll never fall. You believe the Bible? Yeah. All right. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hey, it's going to be a great day when the saints of God go marching down to the throne. Hey, I, I preach to many a funeral. Up in heaven, the Lord will say one day, call your name and say to the saints, so, so-and-so's coming through gate number so-and-so. All them saints that knew you. Amen. 
all the saints, you sit on these pews, and you, they'll come running down to that gate to give you a, a, a welcome home. Praise God. Won't that be great? Your mom and dad, your brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and all them would say to be there to greet you and to welcome you in. Oh, it's going to be a great day. Bible said in 2 Corinthians, I'm talking about your soul salvation. Are you deceived about your soul salvation? Do you know you're saved? 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourself. Are you listening? Examine yourself. Whether you be in the faith, not only examine yourself, prove yourself. And then he says, know ye not your own self. He said, examine yourself, prove your own self. Know your own self. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reptobates, you be a castaway. Folks are deceived, aren't they? The devil is a deceiver. And he's a master deceiver. He's been at this ever since the beginning. And one day he'll be cast in the lake of fire. Deception will be done. But unto the end, multitudes upon multitudes upon multitudes upon multitudes upon multitudes will make their way to hell because they've been deceived by the devil. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Could I see the head of every saved, born again child of God? You say, preacher, I've made my calling election sure I know I'm saved. I don't have to ask mom and daddy and nobody. I know I'm saved. God bless you. God bless you. I wonder if there's a person in this building. You say, preacher, I couldn't raise my hand right there, but I'd sure like to raise it right now and ask you to, for prayer. I need prayer today, preacher. Pray for me. I need prayer. Pray for me. What about it? God bless you. Yes, I see that hand. Anybody else? Just slip it in and hold it long enough for me to see it and take it right back down. Oh, don't let the devil deceive you. Don't let the devil take your soul to hell. You see, if you're not saved, you're deceived. If you don't know Jesus, you're deceived. If you don't know the Word of God, you're deceived. That's what he said. I didn't say it. God said it. Oh, beloved, come to Jesus today. Run to Jesus Christ. He'll set you free. He'll give you light. He'll give you wisdom. He'll give you understanding. He'll give you instruction. Just come to Jesus today. He's the Savior. He's the forgiver. He's the redeemer. He's the one that washes you and makes you clean. Oh, my, my, my. Come to Jesus.